When a device newly obtains IP configuration manually or using some other means such as DHCP, it becomes necessary to determine the uniqueness of this information prior to sending data on the network. Otherwise, having two or more hosts with the same IP address on a network could result in communication failures. The Internet Engineering Task Force defines the IP version 4 address conflict detection in RFC 5227 in an attempt to solve this problem. Hello guys, we'll talk about the ARP probe and ARP announcement. When a host on a computer network obtains an IP address, it must first probe this address to verify its uniqueness in order to prevent communication failures. Except in special cases, such as gateway redundancy scenarios, having two devices using the same IP address will result in poor network performance and unstable connectivity for hosts experiencing that conflict. A device with an IP address must have obtained it through a configuring agent. This configuring agent may be a network administrator who performs manual configuration of the host, a DHCP server that dynamically assigns this IP address, or even through software, such as in IP version 4 link local addressing, where an IP address with a network ID 169.254.0.0 is assigned to a host after several failed attempts to reach the DHCP server. The configuring agent in this case is a pseudo-random number generator. No matter how a host obtains an IP address, the detection of an IP conflict should be made known to the configuring agent in order to solve the problem. By using mechanisms such as an error message displayed on a screen, an SNMP notification, or by using suitable means such as sending a DHCP decline message, the configuring agent can be notified. When host A is assigned a new IP address, newly joins a network, or becomes actively connected to a network, it broadcasts an ARP Pro packet on the local network. The ARP Pro packet is simply an ARP request packet that is built differently, with the sender's IP address field set to all zeros. This ensures that all hosts do not corrupt their ARP cache tables in the event that a host with that IP address already exists on the network. Secondly, the target IP address field is also set to the IP address of the host. This ensures that if a host with that IP address exists, it responds to the ARP probe message since it is now the target. Before sending the ARP probe message, Host A waits for a random time between 0 and 1 second, then begins to broadcast the ARP probe message on the link. It will continue to probe this IP address until it makes three successful probes, provided that it does not receive an ARP reply message during this time. Host A then waits for a short random time to confirm that indeed the IP address is available for use. Wait. What could possibly go wrong during this testing phase? Two things, which would require host A to notify the configuring agent of a conflict. 1. Another device on the link is using the same IP address and sends an ARP reply message to host A, or the device sends a normal ARP broadcast request message after host A might have sent the ARP probe. Two. Another device on the link was inadvertently configured with the same IP address and sends an ARP probe about the same time as host A. If neither of the above happens, host A can now claim this IP address as available for use. One final step is for host A to broadcast an ARP announcement message to inform other hosts of its presence on the network and update their ARP cache entries for this new mapping. Here, the sender IP address field is now populated with the new IP address in order to create a valid mapping. Performing this step confirms that the IP address can now be used by host A. However, there may be scenarios where a device already using that IP address was temporarily out of range 
and hence unable to receive the probe packet sent by host A during the conflict detection phase. Such as when a wireless terminal temporarily goes out of range of an access point or a temporary fault on the link between hubs or switches on which these hosts are connected. This isn't much of an issue as ARP messages will always be exchanged on a network and whenever a host detects an IP conflict, appropriate measures are taken to prevent catastrophic outcomes on the network. In the next video, we'll discuss the gratuitous ARP packet. Please subscribe and turn on bell notifications. See you in the next one and thanks for watching.